It's a privilege to be at Liberty Baptist Church tonight in Muncie, Indiana, and right here in Delaware County. And our thought tonight is going to be on the three most important questions ever asked to an individual. Three of the most important questions ever asked. If you will, look at Matthew chapter number 16, starting with verse 13. And we'll read four verses there, and then we will continue with the message. The Bible says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful Bible that we have, the infallible, inerrant, preserved Word of God. Help us to be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name we ask it, and amen and amen. We're thinking tonight on three questions that have been asked in the course of time, and it's very important, the answers to which we give these questions. It was said of Socrates, the great mathematician, that he taught by the Socratic method, by asking, by questioning. And the Lord Jesus here asked a question. First of all, he says, whom do ye say that I am? I think that's a question that every individual somehow has to be able to give a response. Whom do you say? Is the Lord Jesus Christ, is he just a teacher? Was he just perhaps a person that did some good deeds? Was he just a person that came and occupied 33 and a half years on this earth? And then we know no more about him. Who is this man that we call Jesus? I believe Christ's inquiry here is this. He wanted to know specifically, whom do you say? That answer, that question demands an answer. There was a book that was written on evidence that demands an answer. Your eternal destination depends on how you answer this question. The first question that we're dealing here is, whom do ye say that he is? I would submit tonight, and obviously if we had the time and could go into the treatise and go into the background and do all of the study and inquiry, that we would be perhaps here several hours of trying to give whatever lucidity and validity to these questions. But the Bible is very emphatic, the Word of God, that Jesus Christ was both the God-man. He was both divine and also the Son of God. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 22, the Bible says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 
Then in the book of John chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, priest unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. First John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. The Bible said in Mark chapter 1 and verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our question is, whom do ye say that he is? That's question number one. And the answer is so imperative of an answer. Of an answer. The question begs an answer. You know, we come into this life and we're here and there are certain things that we must question and get into our being that how did we get here? Why are we here? And where are we going after we leave here? I submit unto you tonight that the Bible that we embrace tells us that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all that have come to him. The Bible said in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 that there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Bible lets me know that he was great in the covenant. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do his will, O Lord. He was great in his, in his being born in the crib, if you will. He was great in his lifetime, in the many miracles. No man ever spake like this man. No one could say to the sea, peace be still, and it would heed the command. No one could ever say that before Abraham was, I am. No one could tell a man that I saw you before you were under the juniper tree, that omniscience, omnipotence goes hand in hand with the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Whom do you say that he is? Is he just another figure? Is he just another historical person in the annals of the world civilization? Or do you recognize him as the king of kings and lord of lords? I say praise the Lord. I recognize him as the sovereign ruler of the universe. Second question that we must deal with tonight is where do we go? The Bible said over here very quickly, he said unto them in the second John chapter 6 and verse six, uh, 67, Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? First question was, what do men say? Here the question becomes, will ye also go away? I believe there are those that have heard, but have gone away. There are those that have heard of the story of, of salvation. How that Christ Jesus came into the world, gave his life, went to an old rugged cross, bore in his own body our sins on the tree, and he that was pure and holy and undefiled 
became sin, as it were, allowed the righteous Holy Father to look upon him as though he were the vilest of sinners. No wonder John Newton could sing and write amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Amen. Are you going to hear and then go away? Where do we go? And so the question becomes this. Then Simon Peter answered him again. Simon Peter, the very caricature of humanity. Daring, sometimes maybe a little bit boastful, sometimes a little bit headstrong, sometimes a little bit uh, a, a person that would reach conclusions rather quickly. Yet, the Lord Jesus loved Peter. And I'm glad that he not only loved him, but I'm glad that he loved me. Greater love than this hath no man than he lay down his life for his friend. I believe that the greatest verse in all of the scripture, if we had to hang our hat on it, so to speak, would be John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the essence, the totality of the gospel. You must believe that Jesus died, was buried, that he rose for your justification as the scriptures have declared. And that's the way of salvation. It's not by good works. It's not by meritorious deeds. It's not because somebody might know who you are in social standing. It may not, it's obviously not because you have been a positive contributor to the uh, community. He told a good man, he said, ye must be born again. There's no greater question after the first question when we ask, whom do you say? Do you recognize me? Do you recognize me for who I am? Do you see me as, a, as both God and man? That I formed the worlds, that I created it all, that I spoke the worlds by faith. The Lord Jesus spoke the worlds into existence. But secondly, I want to ask these questions. He said, but will ye also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Christ on down there in chapter 13 and verse 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment, garments and was set on it again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Then in verse 5 in chapter 16, But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? And then in verse number 6, He said, Because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Aren't you glad tonight that we can know where he has gone? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All roads don't read, lead to heaven. There's a one way, the narrow way, the straight way. Christ declared it as such, and you and I can believe it to the uttermost. And then thirdly tonight, the question then comes up. He said, what then do you do with Christ? What are you going to do with Christ? Look at Mark chapter 15 and verse 12. And Pilate answered and said unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. First of all, whom do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Secondly, where where do we go? When the second question then says, will you also go away? You've seen what I've done. You've been close to me. The inner circle has actually handled me and put their hands upon me. I walked upon the water. I healed the centurion's daughter. I gave sight to the blind. I made a man 
rise up and walk that had been crippled. I gave a man clean, smooth skin that was a leper. You've been with me. Are you going to go away now? Adversity's coming. They're going to come. I must need go to Calvary. They didn't understand it. The disciples didn't. A lot of us today, we still don't understand the, the plan of God, how that God robed himself in flesh, was willing to take the scorn, the abuse, to take the mockery, to take all of, of the uh, vituperation, to take the abusions, the, the abrasions, the agony of the cross. But I'm glad that the grave could not hold him. Somebody say amen right there. I'm glad that he's alive and alive forevermore. Then the question says only, what whom do you say? Where do we go? But what do we do? And this is the mission of Liberty Baptist Church, that we do something with the gospel. What shall I do with Jesus? I submit unto you, let's take the word of God, not only in Jerusalem, not only in uh, uh, Samaria and Judea, but unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's reach other cities with the gospel. Let's tell other people that there is hope in Christ. The situation may look futile. It may look very dangerous. It may look very deceptive. It may look very depressing. But I've got good news for you tonight. I'm glad that the anchor still holds. I'm glad tonight that we have a hope an anchor of the soul that's both sure and steadfast. No wonder when the song that we sang here this morning that said, Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then I like this one here. I like this final verse. As we get more into the senior years, we realize that we've got to take every window of opportunity to go and do. The Bible lets us know that the will of the Father is that we believe on Jesus, whom he has sent. We're to do something with it. We're debtors, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to them also which at Rome. So said the apostle. And it says, the final verse when Christ shall come, we give up our loved ones and our friends. We say goodbye, and it seems like that it's beginning to become more frequently in my case. But I think of this psalm, when Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation. We're going to a place where it'll be happiness and joy. It's not going to be just a place of solitude and where folks are just going to be, as it were, isolated and no merriment. I'm glad the day that it's never entered into the heart of man the good things that the Lord hath in store for them that love him. And he said, and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great thou art. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the little message that we've had here tonight. Of what do we say? Where are we going to go? And what do we do with the gospel of Christ? Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our pastor and each one that's here tonight, the staff people. In Jesus' name we ask it. And amen and amen.